In this presentation, we will see some of the common BIGO run times when we analyze algorithms. In this lecture, not only we will see common BIGO run times, but we will also visualize them. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is common BIGO run times, and the second topic is visualization of run times. Let's get started with common BIGO run times. So, what are some of the common BIGO run times? This means while analyzing algorithms, what are some of the frequently appearing BIGO run times? That is, the frequently appearing time complexities. The first one is big O of log n. Big O of log n is also known as log time, and the reason is pretty simple. As the size of the input increases, which is represented by n, the growth rate of the algorithm which takes big O of log n time is logarithmic. That is why this time is known as log time. And the example algorithm is binary search. This algorithm takes big O of log n time. We learned what binary search is in one of our lectures. We understood that binary search is a searching algorithm and it is used to search a specific item in a list. And it does that in big O of log n time. And this algorithm is known as the fastest algorithm available till date. Because there is no searching algorithm which takes less than log n time. And I am talking about the worst case time complexity. So, big O of log n is the worst case time complexity of binary search. The second common big O run time is big O of n. And it is also known as linear time. Why it is called linear time? The reason is that as the size of the input increases, the growth rate increases linearly. That is why big O of n is called linear time. And the example algorithm is linear search. The time complexity of linear search is big O of n. And this algorithm is also a searching algorithm. And we understood what linear search is in one of our lectures when we discussed binary search. So, these are the two common big O run times. The third common big O run time is big O of n log n. This is formed after combining these two run times. After combining them, we will get n log n. So, big O of n log n is also a common big O run time. And the example algorithm is quicksort. Quicksort is one of the sorting algorithms and it is the fastest sorting algorithm available till date. The time it takes is big O of n log n. The fourth common big O run time is big O of n square, which is also known as polynomial time. Because as the size of the input increases, the growth rate is observed as polynomial. Therefore, this time is known as polynomial time. And the example algorithm is selection sort. Selection sort is also a sorting algorithm, just like quick sort. And the time it takes is big O of n square, which is greater than big O of n log n. The fifth common big O run time is big O of n factorial, which is also known as exponential time. Because as the size of the input increases, the growth rate is drastic, or we can say the growth rate is exponential. The example problem is traveling salesman problem. This problem is the famous problem and it is also an undecidable problem because the time complexity of this problem is big O of n factorial, which is an exponential time. So, traveling salesman problem is an undecidable problem. And the algorithm which solves this problem is known as traveling salesman algorithm. So, please note that these are the algorithms binary search, linear search, quick sort, selection sort. But traveling salesman is a problem. This is not an algorithm. And also note that binary search and linear search are searching algorithms. Quick sort and selection sort are sorting algorithms. We will understand these sorting algorithms later 
and we will see some more sorting algorithms and understand them as well. These are some of the common big O run times. And they are arranged in the ascending order from top to bottom. This means log n is less than n, n is less than n log n, n log n is less than n square, and n square is less than n factorial. In order to prove this, now let's visualize these run times. And for this, I'm going to draw the table for these operations. Remember, whatever we write within BICO, is treated as the number of operations. So, log n, n, n log n, n square, n factorial are the number of operations. So, now let's proceed to the next topic where we will now visualize the different run times which we just saw. For this, let's draw the table for different operations log n, n, n log n, n square, and n factorial. And in this column, which is the first column, we have n, which represents the size of the input. Please note that this n represents the size of the input, but this n represents the number of operations. Now, let's plug in different values of n in these operations. Let's say n is 10. Then log n will be 1. As we plug in n as 10 here, we will get 1 because we are assuming base to be 10. Now, this is just my assumption. It might be possible that the base can be any other value. It can be 2. We know in case of binary search, the base of logarithm is 2. But here, for the sake of simplicity, I am assuming the base to be 10. This simplifies the calculations. Log 10 base 10 is 1. What about n? We will get 10 here because if we plug in 10, we will get n as 10. What about n log n? n log n is obtained after multiplying n and log n. So we just need to multiply these two values. 10 into 1 is 10, so we'll get 10 here. What about n square? As we plug in n as 10 here, we will get 10 to the power 2, which is equal to 100. So we will get 100 here. What about n factorial? 10 factorial is equal to 3,62,800, which is much greater value compared to these values. We can also observe that the size of the input is just 10. And on the other hand, n factorial is 3,62,800. That is why big O of n factorial is called the exponential time. Because even for the smaller input sizes, the rate of growth is drastic. Now, let's say that n is 20. If n is 20, we will get log 20 base 10 here, which is equal to 1.3. Here, we will get 20. And here, we will get 20 into 1.3, which is equal to 26. What about n square? We will get 20 to the power of 2, which is equal to 400. What about n factorial? 20 factorial is 2.432902 into 10 to the power 18. Such a large value. Now let's say that n is 100. If n is 100, then we know log 100 base 10 is 2. What about n? We will get 100 here. What about n log n? Just multiply 2 and 100. We will get 200. What about n square? For n equal to 100, n square is equal to 100 to the power of 2, which is equal to 10,000. What about n factorial? 100 factorial is this large value. 9.332622 into 10 to the power 157. This is very, very large. So, we can observe the number of operations for different n sizes. Now, let us assume that one operation takes one millisecond of time. In that case, we can represent these numbers in milliseconds like this. If we observe carefully, the order that we have written here is correct. It is in ascending order. In order to visualize this, let's see row number 2. In the row number 2, we can see as n is 20, 
log n is 1.3 milliseconds, n is 20 milliseconds, n log n is 26 milliseconds, n square is 400 milliseconds, and n factorial is 7.7 .7 into 10 to the power 7 years. So we can see that log n is less than n, n is less than n log n, n log n is less than n square, and n square is much less than n factorial. No one can wait for these many years. This is 7.7 .7 into 10 to the power 7 years. That's why the problem which takes n factorial time is considered an undecidable problem. And from this table, we can visualize different run times. We can observe that log n is less than n, is less than n log n, is less than n square, is less than n factorial. So with this, we have visualized different run times. And this means we are done with this topic also. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.